This is an introduction to calculus. Uh, calculus is one of those topics that causes a lot of people problems. I think it's because um, of the notation. Sometimes things look really wacky and weird and talking about graphs. I think also uh, it's a tough one because it requires you to be pretty good at most of the topics. You have to be good at, for example, linear functions because of these tangent lines we're going to talk about. You have to be okay with graphs and things that curve because of this idea about a derivative. So I, I think it can be a, a struggle for a lot of people. I know my students uh, you know, used to call it calculus, ha ha. So we're going to do an introduction here. I like this in math, I use the guess and hope method. So we're going to talk about this idea of this word derivative. What does that really mean? And what it really means is just this, it's a rate of change. That's the simplest way to put it. It's a rate of change. It's really how one thing changes with another. And it turns out you know all about rates of change. You actually know about this. You just haven't called it that. For example, if you saw a straight line graph, something like uh, y, you know, f of x equals 2x plus 3, something like this. This is a straight line. You know about a rate of change because you've heard of it before. You've called it the gradient, that's all, right? This word right here, the gradient, it turns out that is a rate of change. So the gradient is a derivative. So actually, if you see it that way, it's not actually so bad. See, it's something you've already seen before, this idea that, you know, x2 minus x1 over, uh, sorry, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which could be just seen as, you know, delta y over delta x. This idea, though, that a gradient is just a rate of change. That's super easy. And in fact, later on, after you've seen some of the other uh, videos I'm going to show you, come back and then you'll see how the derivative of this thing right here, we're going to learn some tricks for derivatives. Do you know what the gradient of this graph is? For example, this one right here. What is the actual gradient here? You probably learned that this is y equals mx plus c form. And you learned just that m is just a gradient. In other words, you know that the gradient equals 2. But later, when I show you some tricks for how to actually find derivatives, I could also say now the derivative, that also equals 2, because the derivative is the gradient. All these words, rate of change, gradient, der derivative, they are the same thing. Just some of them make more sense in certain contexts. So uh, one thing that's really important is talking about tangent lines, because we're going to talk about the uh, gradient of straight lines that we've done before. But how do we do with the gradient of a not straight line? That's going to be interesting. So what we're going to do is if we have graphs that are curvy, in other words, nonlinear, like this weird thing here, this thing is harder to know what the derivative is. Because a derivative is a gradient, sure, but the problem is a gradient depends on where you're looking at. Like, watch, what if I place a point right here? What's the gradient doing right here? This is a little bit sneaky. Watch, I can draw myself what's called a tangent line. A tangent line is just that. It's a line that sort of, it follows the shape of the, of the curve at that particular point. So for example, I've just drawn a tangent line right now. I've drawn a tangent line to this blue curve at this point. Do you see how? I imagine that if you zoomed way in, it sort of shows you what the shape would be like. Like watch, right here, for example, if I was to draw a tangent line right here, can you see that it would look differently? It would match like this. It would go that way. For example, a tangent line here would be like, I don't know, maybe like this. Something like that, maybe. That would be a tangent line there. And maybe over here, if I drew a tangent line, let's just see. So I'm just trying to have you practice drawing tangent lines. Watch, see this one right here, for example? If I want to draw a tangent line, there we go. There's a tangent line. So can you see how the tangent line... Um, has a different shape depending on where you follow the curve. And what I always imagine for this stuff, for tangent lines and gradients and these, these derivatives, I just imagine you're walking on this graph. Imagine you're going from left to right. Are you going up a hill? Up a hill means you're going, uh, you have a positive derivative. So I'll just say up a hill, so to speak. In other words, if you're going that way, then we'll say the derivative is positive. The derivative equals positive. Um, and conversely, if you're going down a hill, uh, then the opposite happens, right? So I imagine that if you're going down a hill, that means you're going sort of that way, then the derivative is negative. This is the idea behind it. I'm just going to write this down here. Negative. So really, you can draw tangent lines wherever you want on curves. In this example here, the tangent line is easy. It's the same line everywhere. Look, if I drew a tangent line right here, it would go that way. I drew a tangent line here, same line. Over here, same line. That's why the gradient is just simply that number. 
but it gets more interesting when it's a curvy line. That's where this chapter comes in. So we're going to learn about how to draw and how to find the gradient of these tangents here. Now, of course, you could do it if you're really old school. You could actually draw yourself your tangent line right here and then actually pick two points on this tangent line and find the gradient. In fact, that's one of the basic ideas behind the general definition of what's called a derivative. You actually do that. But the important thing here, though, is where do you want the gradient? What I mean by that is that it's because it's different everywhere. Do you notice here? Let's say this. Here, let's say the derivative equals positive. Does that make sense if I say deriv for short for derivative? The derivative is positive here because as you're going from left to right, you're walking up a hill. Down here, what is it? Can you see here you're going down a hill, so it's negative. Here the derivative is, you're going up a hill, so it's positive. Did you know it's possible to have a derivative at zero? Watch this, right here. Look at that one. Does that make any sense? Like watch, if I'm walking on this hill right here, this right here is not a hill. That's because if I try to find the gradient of it, I'll have a rise over run. There's no rise. So in other words, here, the derivative equals zero. By the way, it's also zero here, look. And do you see that derivatives, like in other words, slopes can be steeper or they can be shallower. Now, you can have something that's a really, really steep line. So here's another one right here where the derivative equals zero. Derivative equals zero, oops, there you go. So your derivative here equals zero because it's flat. Here it's negative. And can you see that over here, for example, it's even steeper, so it's even a larger number? Like if this was a slope of like, I don't know, two, this is maybe like four over here because you're going up a steeper hill. If you think of this, believe it or not, this is everything you need from the calculus part. This is really the key of it is right here. Everything else is just going to be details. So that's the idea behind a derivative. Now, um, we have notation for this that we're going to use. For example, if we have a, an original function uh, written like f of x, how do we actually ask for this derivative thing? We're going to call it f primed of x. So do you see this primed here, this little one? That's how we can say derivative. So that just means take the derivative. If we had a function that looks like y, sometimes we use y primed. But even better than that is actually one that goes like this. Well, so I'm actually going to erase it. A better one is this. You may think this is annoying, but this is actually the best one. Use this one for the derivative. What it really says is take your equation for y. I'll even write it down. So take the equation for y and find the x derivative. You might think that's absolutely ridiculous, but that's actually because later on in mathematics, um, or even like in physics, for example, in my field, we have lots of equations that are defined by multivariables. What if you have x's, q's, r's? Which derivative do you take? In other words, how is this thing changing? 